So recruitment, we hear a lot about that. I want to focus in again on an issue we've talked about that's a retention issue. Two thirds of active duty military families have children living at home, two thirds. The number one issue for many, many parents is where will my children be? Who's taking care of them when I have to be at work? Now, this is why the Department of Defense runs the largest employer-sponsored child care program in the entire United States. Our child care is affordable. It is high quality so that our service members can show up to work, protect our country, and know that their children are safe and well cared for. Here's good news. The DOD program is known for being one of the best child care programs in the country. But here is the bad news. DOD cannot find enough workers. There were 12,000 children on DOD's wait lists as of last year, waiting for child care. Think about the, what that means. That's more than 12,000 parents struggling to find out how to meet their military obligations when they have small children at home that need care. So today we have the deputy chiefs, and I just want to get this on the record. And I'll start with you, Lieutenant General Miller. Um, is child care critical to the Air Force's readiness and retention, and therefore to national security? Or let me ask it another way. How important is child care to being able to retain the military that you have invested in, you have paid for their training. These are the people who not only can do the job, the people who are doing the job. How much do you need child care? Oh, it's absolutely critical to readiness. The first thing you do when you get a PCS assignment is you look at, if you have children, where are my children going to go? What is the access to the child care? You know, how, what's available to me, how do I get on the list as soon as possible? So it is absolute, it is a mission ready, I mean, it is mission readiness. Mission readiness. Lieutenant General Glenn. Yeah, I would, I would echo Lieutenant General Miller's comment. It is, it continues to be a consideration for every family. And what families seek, we hear over and over again, is predictability. And, and so can I predictably, in this instance, predictably take care of my children uh, do I know what school system, is there after school activities available and all the things you're related to? Yes, Senator, it's very okay. important. Okay, can I count on this? Really important. Vice Admiral Cheeseman. Senator, same answer for the Navy. It's absolutely mission critical to be able to take care of our, 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 our sailors' children, and we're making every effort we can to increase capacity at all those child development centers that you're talking about. And Lieutenant General Stitt? Senator Warren, critical to the overall quality of life and therefore critical to the care of our soldiers and families. And we want to make sure that when the soldier comes into work, they're focused on the mission and that they know that their child is cared for appropriately. And Ms. Kelly. Senator Warren, it's absolutely crucial. And in, in the Space Force, um, because of the uniqueness of some of the mission sets that we do, and, and some of that focused around the clock type of scenario. You know, that's the thing about it too. It's the kind of work you do. I just, I don't know how to keep underscoring this. 12,000 children are on your wait lists right now. And I have to assume the demand would be even greater, except there are some people who just give up and don't even put a child on the wait list. They just say the list already is too hard. And here's the problem. Since the start of the pandemic, recruiting and retention of DOD childcare workers has been a challenge. The shortages and the wait list for military families are not getting better. You all are talking about your recruiting is getting better across the services. It's not getting better for your childcare workers. In March, DOD reported it was still short 3,900 caregivers needed to match our existing child care needs. In other words, the DOD centers are there. This is the part that's really shocking. We've got the physical facilities for it, but the staffing shortages right now are so bad that centers are accepting 30% fewer children than they could if they had full staffing. And I know there are a lot of ideas 
about how to improve childcare access for military families, but clearly staffing up has to be the number one focus. Hiring more people would let us increase the overall capacity literally by tens of thousands of children if we just hire up to all of the spots we've got. So there's good news again, and that is this year's DOD's budget request includes funding for proposals from a special task force to address the child care staffing shortage. Number one on the list is reworking the pay scale for child care workers. We will be doing this for the first time in 30 years. Uh, we need to give these caregivers the critical pay raises that they need. DOD has asked for $33.5 million to invest in child care for military families. I would just like anybody who wants to, to make the case to get it on the record why DOD should get its full $33.5 million from this Senate, and we'll fight for it over in the House, so that at a minimum we can start to staff up the facilities we've got. Anyone want to swing at that ball? Senator, I'll take that. Um, we, we've got to get the additional funding to do, to do this. Um, right now, we have, we have in the Air Force, we have initiated many um, things to increase that. And we have seen an increase, but we're still sitting at about 80% child care providers. Um, so we have a 20%, uh, we have 20% deficit. And so anything we can do, I will tell you that we are, we are also looking at modifying the PDs um, of the child care so they're not, you know, so it's more of educational type thing so we can, we can pay them more. Um, but absolutely we need that because it is a, it is a readiness issue and right now we are facing um, peer competitors that we have not seen um, since probably World War II and, and Russia, you know, during the Cold War. So it is critical now. Good. Anybody have anything they want to add Look on Look forward to working with the committee and the Department of Defense on a way forward. We need to find the right people and compensate them appropriately. Thank you, Lieutenant General Stitt. Senator, Lieutenant General Glenn? Yeah, one, um, I think one positive note in all of what you just said and then, and then reinforcing it is thanks to the support we've gotten in the past, the fee assistance program, mm -hmm. right? It, it gives me much more comfort about where and what our children are up to because we don't have a waiting list for fee assistance. The assistance is being fully utilized and maximized. And so what it does speak to is what I believe what you said earlier, which is the quality of the care and the confidence that, that families have in the on-installation child care. So we have folks waiting for their opportunity to come out of you know, something not on an installation onto it. And, and I'm optimistic, and, I, and we appreciate the continued support there. But you know, to your point, you know, the funding of it, there are many quality of life discussions and issues that many of them came up in panel one. We collectively talk about this all the time. There, there aren't too many we would argue against, but we have to have the top line funding to afford them. Mm -hmm. There's things in what you're suggesting here that we would all do right now. We, we have different levels of, of assistance for folks for their first child. It, that enrolls between 50 and 100% talking between us, we'd all have 100% if we could all afford 100%. Mm -hmm. And so we have to have the top line yeah. to afford and these And our programs. job is to make sure you can afford 100%. Did you want to add something, Vice Admiral Cheeseman? Senator, yes, ma'am. I can't not go on record after all my colleagues did. So Absolutely. I, pre I appreciate the time. So, so to your point about child care, in the Navy, and I imagine it's in, in the rest of the services as, as well, there are CDCs within the budget to be, con to be built a lot of emphasis has been put there in the Navy to, to get at the foundational support that our sailors need. Any assistance we could have from Congress to accelerate that or to help us with the hiring, the future hiring that we anticipate will be greatly appreciated. Okay, I appreciate that. Ms. Kelly, you don't want to be left behind here. Not at all, certainly not on this topic, ma'am. What I would add is also that there are other programs as well that we have to take advantage of that 
cover that round the clock care that we discussed yes. and also leveraging um, child care in your home scenarios and the community partnerships that are so important. So clearly um, additional top line to cover increased pay is crucial um, as is taking advantage of some of the other uh, options that are out there because the situations are so unique for individual, at least in my case, guardians that we want to make sure that we've got multiple options to try to, to, to combat this issue. I am looking forward to the day when every single service member with a small child who's thinking about whether to sign up for another tour of duty is saying, you know, if we don't though, we're gonna lose this first rate, top notch, affordable, available childcare. That's one more good reason to stay in the service. So that's the day we're looking forward to. I, I wanna thank you all. Do you have a closing statement? Anything more you wanna say? Uh, I want to thank all of our witnesses for your testimony today. I also want to thank John Clark, Gary Leeling, Andy Scott, Noah Sisk, Katie Magnus, and Sean O'Keefe for their work in putting today, uh, today's hearing together. Our people are our greatest strength as a nation, and we need to do better for them. We've got a lot of people who are committed to doing well, we need to make sure you've got the resources to do even better. That is our job here. I want to thank you all for being here. Senators have until Friday, May 9th, to submit additional questions for the record. Um, with that, this hearing is adjourned.